with that being said, we're jumping into game number two. Down south is Lucifron playing as the somewhat surprising Delhi Sultanate in blue. And to the north is going to be Donati playing as the French in yellow. Opening up with a mill right away is Lucifron and also Mosque. So from what I've seen from Delhi Civilization use being on open maps, I think your first major decision point is when you build that first Mosque. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And while well, we go for the efficient production instantly here, going for wheelbarrow as well, and added two villagers and then the scout. Interesting approach here by Lucifron. Indeed. Looks like he wants to grab himself some extra sheep over here. That's probably the only reason why you would add the second scout at this point. Makes some sense because you won't be going for professional scouts, it's very, very likely. And speaking of professional scouts, this could be great for Donati because the Delhi have a hard time getting pro scouts, whereas the French are almost guaranteed to grab it. So as things stand, it's possible for Donati to swoop up all four hunts on the map for himself. Actually, Mr. Lidakor, there is a build order for Delhi where you rush out your landmark with like seven, eight villagers, and then you just go for professional scouts. And it takes like two minutes or like three minutes here, but we obviously will have some increased mosque time. And you get a reasonable timing with your professional scouts and can contest at least two of those deer spots. That could be an option. It is an option. I'm just not sure how fast that's going to be compared to French because you also need a stable for some additional scouts. Whereas the French, obviously their feudal age is very fast uh, and in general they are able to get professional scouts out pretty fast. So... It is an option, as you said, but I would be a little surprised to see that happening over here. Via Barrow is something I'm not surprised to see, though, that's already coming in here for Lucifron. Uh, let's see about that. Obviously, the wood transition will be super interesting because you need to get the stable out. You need to get the lumber camp before. Right now, he's sitting at zero wood. And as you can see, resources are already there. I think there's a professional scout play. And that's probably something that lots of people did not see from daily before. And as you can see, with this strategy, you need to rush your landmark because the professional scout upgrade just takes so, so long. You are a smart, smart people because it seems like you're going to be right. We already have uh, efficient production in as well. And oh, indeed, one thing that you can do is get your stable up and then use the scholar once you're finished or almost done with professional scouts and empower the stable with the efficient production so you can get your scouts out a little faster. So there's a lot of tricks over here with this. Lucifron is still a little low on the wood department though, so affording that stable is going to be a bit of a challenge. He's not even going for the wood line, he's just going for the straggler trees for now. Yeah, well, not much he can do. The question is, will he go on to the second tree? and build the stable, or will he go lumber camp into stable? I think second tree into stable makes a little more sense over here, because, as you said, you want to rush out uh, that professional scouts as much as possible, so going for lumber camp would delay that quite a bit. There is some walking time, you have to build the lumber camp, chop down the trees at the forest, and then make the stable, so that's going to delay you quite a bit. Oh, and he actually decides to cancel Weber with 28 seconds left, and now goes for professional scouts. So wants to squeeze out every single second here. And yeah, an interesting build order for sure. Also something questionable. Should he have gone for survival techniques over wheelbarrow? Obviously wheelbarrow better for your wood villagers and your gold villagers. But your main income will be those deers. I feel like the wheelbarrow is a little more general purpose. So... If you go for pro, uh, the survival techniques, you basically say, okay, I am 100% sure I will have a lot of hunt. If you feel a little unsure about how much hunt you are going to grab, then Wilbur probably makes a little more sense. And I think that could be the situation here, especially given the fact that he's not rushing up that stable at this point. So compared to Donati, Donati is already getting professional scouts in. He's going to have it in uh, 50 seconds as compared to Lucifron having it in 145, so the timing is going to be nice, but Donardi is going to have the advantage with pro scouts here, I think. Mm -hmm. But that's totally fine, right? There's so much more investment 
for Lucifron going into that. So, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Now, lots of villagers on board. This is kind of the moment where you already pull your villagers away. Because do you really need nine villagers on wood right now? That only would make sense if you also try to go for a barracks and try to go for an early spearman upgrade. It's a possibility. He is indeed very, very heavy on the lumberjacking department right now. Here comes the scholar and it's going straight towards that stable to empower it. And we are going to see a barracks, as you said, for a couple of spearmen. Scouts are now coming in. It takes only eight seconds for him to make a scout. So he can actually catch up once... Uh, Scholar is empowering that stable. On the other side, Lord Ari just finished with professional scouts and he's starting off with his own hunt. As things stand, I think Lucifron will have no problem picking up his own hunt and he has to be happy with that. Ooh, interesting place. But obviously, lots and lots of control here for Don Ari. We'll get the deer spots quite easily. But still, if you share it 2 2, that's totally fine for US Delhi. Castle age is the most important age here. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Because uh, if you can pick up all that hunt, you also have the berry bonus for the deli. And let's not forget, you're not investing resources into those upgrades. Because all of those are for free. So an otherwise very expensive upgrade professional scouts is something that you're getting for free. Now here comes a knight from Donari. And that's going to make it a little more difficult for Lucifron to pick up all the hunt out there. He needs to be careful not to lose those scouts. But it looks like he's going to have no trouble with that. So, ultimately, as you said, he's going to be able to swoop up at least one of his hunts. Potentially both of those. Mm, scout is luring the knight away. Went a bit closer to the TC. Villagers now need to run away. What's happening here? Oh, nice move. Buddy blocking the low HP villager away. Yeah, that was a beautiful move out there. Spearman coming in for Lucifron to hold against this one. But he's going to have a very, very compact and well-defendable base over here. Very nice food income based on the berries. And now a blacksmith early from him. He wants to start researching those upgrades as fast as possible. Blacksmith will be delayed by the knight trying to get the villager kill. But once again, the villager survives. So, so far, Donari wasn't able to get a single villager kill, if I'm not mistaken. You know why? Because we see an upgrade that we basically never see. Textiles already researched by Lucifron. More HP for his villagers, and that's why those two villagers survived. That is a fun move to make for him because obviously, when he's getting textiles, he's using that town center for it. So he's sacrificing villagers. So he's gonna have less veils, but they're a little safer. As things stand, it's 31 villagers for Donardi, only 26 for Lucifron. Obviously, part of that comes from the faster training villagers for the French, though. And I'm craigasming a bit here. Lucifron even cancelled the upgrade to Harden Spearmen, squeezed in two Spearmen or three Spearmen for defense, and now is re-upgrading again. Simply knew, okay, I needed to squeeze those in for the defense. Beautiful decision making. And I think he wants to swoop in and steal some hunt over here. There are four knights over here for Donardi. He tried that in the previous game. He managed to get quite a lot of hunt away. And if you look at the TC spot for Donardi, Technically, it's possible to steal some hunt, but it's going to be a little difficult because that place is just crowded with buildings. Still, it f seems fairly certain that Lucifron just wants to steal some hunt from his opponent right now. Yeah, this time Donati sees it from a mile away, so should not be a problem at all. And yeah, I would be really surprised if those scouts are even trying to commit. Yellow Knights look so beautiful, something I'm just noticing. Mm. It is just such a nice change-up compared to all those red and blue knights. They are looking spectacular. Yeah, yeah, love it. Maybe we'll see more of it in the future. One scout yoinking away now. And yeah, looks pretty pretty solid here. Second blacksmith. I love every single move Lucifron is taking here. Yeah, he's using the deli very, very smartly. And one thing that we haven't talked about is that should this game uh, or should this set go to game number three, he would still have a ton of powerful civilizations available because he used a sort of underrated civilization over here or something that's not generally considered that powerful. He's using it really well, but even if he loses this game, he's going to have a ton of powerful civs still left for game number three. Oh yeah, yeah, so true. We could still see Boulder Bay French, right? Maybe Lucifron is going for it now. <laughs> oh. It's a possibility, especially knowing that his opponent has no French available and no Rus available. So 
the options are somewhat limited for Donardi now. Donardi's got a fairly sizable force of knights here, so Lucifron still needs to be careful. He's coming up with the Palisades on the left side. We do have one scholar inside that barracks as well. And now I feel like, as you said, it's straight to Castle Age and then probably try to contest the relics because something that you can do really well with Delhi is contesting relics. You get a lot of scholars out here, so just as much as you can go for the relics with the Rus or the Holy Roman Empire, you can do that with Delhi. Love the use of those spearmen for Lucifron, leveraging the fact that he can make Palisades himself. He can just... Uh, build those with the spearmen instead of the villagers mm -hmm. yeah probably walls for sure what of the left hand side spearmen at the right hand side i don't think those knights do even want to engage absolutely in the most recent balance patch which was like at least one month ago the spearmen also oh, received <clears throat> it's time <laughs> <laughs> yeah the spearmen received uh, some extra bonus damage against knights so even without the brace, which is definitely a problem still, but even without the brace, they are actually more effective against knights than they used to be back in the release version of the game. Yeah, that's why we have not seen the mass French Arabia play here. Okay, time for some yoinking again. Those seven scouts coming from the side. And now there is no knights to push that. That's very clever from Lucifron because he knew exactly Don already came in. And it looks like this is going to be successful. Nothing really prevents that. Only 10 villagers garrisoned inside a town center. One scout goes down, but uh, Lucifron is getting away with, I believe, four carcasses. There goes one scout, so it's going to end up being just three, two... But this scout can still pick it up. Three carcasses for those leftover scouts is still a great value, I think, for Lucifron. Mm. Do you think in the future people will get that good and actually check how much food there is on a carcass because he picked up a 160 food carcass and there's still one 350 lying around i think you just ship pick your scouts and you simply don't have time for that because it's yeah. better to steal four carcasses that are like half depleted than mess around trying to look for the ones that are full and then lose all your scouts now it looks like donard is pursuing those scouts but lucifer is going to leverage this fact that he's coming in with horsemen this is not something mm -hmm. that donardi was aware of he didn't expect that many horsemen to come in and Lucifron will yoink two villagers out there. A great raid from him. He's just leveraging this uh, Delhi civilization so, so well. I think he could have even committed. He could have found some more villager kills there under the CC, but obviously would have cost him every single horseman. So I can absolutely see why he didn't want to throw away all his mobile army. In the end, he is getting back with apparently two carcasses. And now look at that completely untouched economy the berry power and we have the compound of the defender coming in here with one villager having a seizure behind that construction oh and spearman defending those scouts as well finding some kills nice moves for lucifron and castle age is just so good for delhi indeed especially if you're not using the house of slow learning because that landmark became a little underwhelming with the recent Delhi research oh. nerf, so the Indeed. upgrades take a ton of time to grab it. So Compound Defender makes some sense, and I think we could maybe even see some Delhi cheese over here moving up with the Spearman and getting some fortifications close to the sacred sites. Don't already preparing a push in the middle, though, with some rams and uh, archers. We'll see how much those horsemen can do against Donardi's base, though. Delhi cheese? Do you mean Paneer? Oh boy. Oh boy. Castle Age is in and we have veteran Spearman coming in already. Looking at uh, Lucifron's POV though, he has no idea about that siege push coming in. And I think this is the timing that Donardi wants to nail because that is a fairly sizable force of archers and uh, knights. Oh, Men at Arms could maybe be an option. Siege now. One Mangano will be pretty good. And I don't think he will mind losing that stable. But it just have to be pulled, though. Yeah, he's going to have to pull villagers over here. Here come the knights. This is a fairly big force, though. On the right side, the horsemen are getting cleaned up from Lucifron. So things are starting to heat up here really fast. As a mangonel is out. And that mangonel already got one big shot on top of those archers. A second shot comes out. And that misses the most of the group. Still, most of the archers are gone. And so are the knights. 
I feel like Lucifron has to be satisfied with this fight, especially if he's able to surround all those knights with the Spearman, which is exactly what he's doing right now. Barely any archers on the field now for Donati. Eats another big mangonel shot, and that starts to turn into a slaughter at this point. How did that mangonel survive for so long? And still the knights are in reasonable numbers there. I don't even know how to call this fight. It is looking very weird because many villagers were sacrificed repairing that mangonel. So ultimately, Lucifron is down to 26 wheels. It looked so good for him for a moment, but then those knights started killing the mangonel repair villagers. And ultimately, despite the fact that Donati lost the majority of his army, I feel like Lucifron lost his entire eco. He's down to 34 population, only 24 wheels. I think he had to sacrifice like 20 villagers to keep that mangonel alive. I, 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 I down to 24 indeed, and yeah, you got some free upgrades, but still, uh, it's not a big army, and now Donati can just sit back, and I think a Castle Age push should just be so good for him with Night Archers, or is he trying to make something happen in Feudal Age, which looks more likely? I don't think that he should. At this point, he should know how big his eco advantage is. In every single category, he's leading by a massive margin, so there is no point risking another Feudal Age push here with Rams. I think it makes more sense to try and be active with the Knights, try and do some raiding damage, see how Lucifron is doing, and then work towards Castle Age. For Donati, Castle Age is not very far away, but he still needs one or two minutes. Mm. Seems like he has different plans, though. Goes for more archers, goes for more Knights. Second archer range, stable and School of Cavalry fully queued up. This will be a second big Feudal Age attack. And Woodline overchopped. Lots of villagers could die here. And Lucifron is sending out villagers for stone. He wants to get those villagers back with a second town center. But upon seeing the archers, he has to retreat. He has no chance at a second town center to compensate for his losses either. As Donati is swooping in once again with a fairly sizable force. Spearmen are now upgraded to veteran though. So they're Castle Age Spears against Feudal Age Knights. But there's still some archers out here. Behind this one, Donati has the majority of the map control and he's using that really well though. He has the berries all around, he's got the boar as well, so his resource income is looking spectacular. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Maybe a second lumber camp would have been something I would really like for Donati, look at that. Hmm. Some man at arms hitting the field over here, those will perform quite decently against the archers. Obviously, they will be great to soak up arrow fire as well and just make sure that those spearmen live a little longer. But, as you said before, the villager count is what is really concerning for Lucifron. It's 30 versus 57, and there is just no sign of Donardi slowing down. Here comes another raid, and many of those lumberjacks are already heavily damaged. Uh, let's see. Knights are moving in. Spearmen. Standing their ground for now. Magno shot, maybe another big one. It is indeed a big one on top of those archers, many of them losing a ton of HP here. Mangonel setting up once again to take a shot. Nice split from Donati, but he loses the majority of his archers over here, and the knights are swooping in for a kill. Most spearmen are going down, a second Mangonel is out, but at this point those archers are starting to become very, very irrelevant, and it's all about the knights killing those leftover villagers. Once again, Donati will be forced to retreat, but he has done a ton of damage again. I feel like this is just slowly snowballing out of control here. Uh, actually, like 30 villagers, pop 48. It still looks horrible, but I thought this would be a game-ending fight. But Lucifron, again, somehow surviving. But yeah, Donati just healing up and he would just throw wave after wave. And at one point, Lucifron needs to expand because soon his food will be empty under Sissy. Lucifron leveraging the fact that Donati isn't uh, controlling the right side of the map right now. He's going for some relics and that could be a ticket back into this game because he won't be able to cut into that villager deficit. He has one town center against French. There is no way he can decrease that villager deficit. But one thing that he could do is grab himself some relics and that can compensate for quite a bit of a villager deficit as some men at arms on the left side do get intercepted by knights. They trigger their running boost. So they can just run away from all those knights. That looks ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> well, Man at Arms in the end will get cleaned up as uh, Donardi is preparing another push in the middle. He's on the way to Castle Age with the Guild Hall. So 
he is going to have the veteran royal knights in in a matter of seconds as well plus he's going to get the extra attack upgrade for free upon hitting castleage because that's also a french bonus that many people don't even know about and oh boy lucifron that feels uh, like what? a terrible move uh, Donati hasn't spotted the villagers and that is probably the berry patch of death here because now Donati knows about that. Donati, I mean, he just needs to send in the archers and he wins this game. Well, he sends them in at the wood line and it will be the wood line of death. Kills four villagers, scout is in there, archers are moving in and that's with like 95% on the way to Carthage. So a bit questionable taking his army onto enemy grounds here, but the knights are pulling back. There is a monk with a relic here, so... Donati probably either wants to grab villager conversions or he wants to grab the knight conversions. He does burn down that uh, berry patch, so he gives up on his lumberjacks for a time being and goes for the berries. Delhi having a berry bonus obviously helps, but Donati is pulling back for the time being. He's waiting for his castle age upgrades. Also, Siege Workshop is coming in for him. I'm pleasantly surprised how well Lucifer is give it, playing, given his uh, situation, because he's behind by 30 villagers for a long time and he's still holding on. Yeah. Delhi are strong in Castle Age. Maybe better than French, but the advantage in Fuel Age was just so big that Delhi player couldn't really compete in Castle Age anymore. Multiple towers coming in here for Donati. He's crawling closer to those sacred sites. He knows exactly he doesn't want to give those to Lucifron because with the Delhi, those sacred sites are much more valuable than with any other civilization. So making sure that the Delhi player can't control a single sacred site is quite vital. In general, Donati's map control is quite nice over here. And he now has veteran royal knights in. And still, those spearmen won't be able to brace against them. Two manganoles, a handful of spearmen, and the monk is the army of Lucifron right now. Mm -hmm -hmm. Is there a wild chance that Donati can take the worst engagement of all times? Like, he took a horrible engagement at the end of game 2 yesterday against the Viper. But he was even further ahead than he is right here. I feel maybe like if he loses all the archers, maybe there's a chance. There comes the Monk, and the archers are separated from the Knight, so the Monk could try to get a conversion over here. Archers will be targeted by the Manganoles. There is the Vololo attempt, and that is going to fail. Nice micro by Donardi to pull back the Knights. Spring Gold will snipe down one of the Manganols. Second Manganol heavily damaged as well. Manganol setting up though and could get a shot out on top of those archers. The archers eat a big shot, but most of those spearmen are now disappearing from the battlefield. Villagers being pulled to repair the Manganol. Getting another shot in though, and that is once again a big shot. But as you said, this is probably insufficient here for Lucifron. Even if the Manganol survives, which seems somewhat unlikely with no more spearmen protecting it, those villagers will probably go down. And indeed, Lucifron taps out. We're going into game number three here. Ooh, interesting. Going to game number three again. Ay, 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 ay. And Lucifron now lots of options. This one, ah, it felt like he was so close to holding. If only he could research his spearman a bit faster, then he could have dealt with the knights a bit better. Maybe? Even more walls? Could that have been an option? Maybe, but I think you were spot on with that veteran spearman thing. Because when he took that fight against that mass knight push, he was using standard feudal age spearmen. So veteran spearmen would have helped so much cleaning up those knights a little faster. And the main reason why he ended up losing this game is because in that specific fight just after Castle Age, he lost like 30 villagers repairing that mangano. And ever since then, he wasn't able to recover. His military numbers were looking pretty decent given his situation, but he was never able to recover his